I'm looking at the whole page. Do we like and follow, then DM, no, or we're we not like or we're not following? We're not, no. we not commenting. Yeah, that's too, that's too obvious. That's why we wrote you. <laughs> I think the marketing has to change. Mm -hmm. Marketing different players for things that they're doing off the court. Yeah. They can't want you to just be in this box as just a basketball player. Yeah. Our fans, supporters in the WBA, they like to feel like they know you. Showing what women are doing off the court mm -hmm. will help that fan base. Yeah, 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 <laughs> ski. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you for tuning in in this episode of Funky Friday. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this. And if you're feeling really funky, leave a comment. Enjoy the show. Yo, what's good? What's popping? What it is, what it ain't, what it could be, what it should be, what it would be. Cam Newton, the son, Mr. Boogie the All, and I'm here with another episode of Funky Friday. And I promise to give good content for the masses, but promise to also keep it funky for your asses. Now... This particular individual needs no introduction, but I'm gonna introduce her ass, right? From Wilmington, North Carolina, a uh, former WNBA player, right? Uh, present to some, introduce to others, Miss Ty Young. What's good with it? What's up? Is you straight? To some, maybe. I see what you did with that. <laughs> I see what you did. I see what you did. No, I was saying, like, are you okay? Are I'm great. you good? I'm great. I'm good. Okay. We've identified that we're both roaches, right? We are. Okay. And we just be chilling in the crevice. Chilling in the cut. To the now, let me give you your flowers while, while, while you're here. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't the type of dude that's going to talk to you behind your back. <clears throat> you a fly. I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, damn, like, she coming, I got to put that on. Like, dang, you know Can't, but you be putting that on, though. I be trying. I don't be trying to look like nobody. That's the thing. Yeah. Like. Individuality. You done, you done been in the game long enough to identify, like, you a fly person, right? But you done also seen some do's and don'ts in fashion. What are your do's and don'ts in fashion? I really don't have like do's and don'ts. I feel like a person should, you know, rock what they're comfortable in. Okay, my don'ts are if you're not comfortable in something, don't do it. Don't wear something because you see somebody else rocking it if it's not your steez, if it's not your flow. Mm. I feel like you should always be comfortable in what you rocking. Yeah. So that's just always my vibe. Like sometimes I wear that some people is like, what is that? What you got on? And is me, is what I like, and that's all that matters. Right, so we're here on Funky Friday and we gotta keep it funky, right? So answer this question. When was the last time you wore a pair of heels? Let's see. Probably like 10 years ago. Really? Yeah. I would've thought longer than that. No, cause I'm actually doing a a, a shoot soon where the guy was like, maybe you should start practicing uh, wearing heels, cause you're gonna have to wear some heels in this shoot. And I'm like, where am I getting heels to practice at? I don't even have any heels. Mm. So it's been years. So through your journey of personal identification, and I think I want to speak to this, but also speak for so many different individuals, like. You're a person who, are, who is very bold, unapologetic. When did you know, right, that your feelings was a little different? Mm, probably in college. Well, let, let me rephrase that. Not different, because in this world of... Yeah, let's be clear. Yeah, like, but... Different how? Huh? Different, like, when you started realizing, like, yo, I don't want to date Tommy. I want to date Tammy. And how, like, it's so many people because every time I, I, I love speaking to people, mm -hmm. black, white, green, blue, straight, gay, heterosexual, homosexual, I don't, I don't care. I, I love speaking. But if we're speaking, let's speak to real. I don't, I don't like 
fabricate. And mm-hmm. so, like, what do you really know? Like, I'm gonna ask the direct questions. And to that, there's beauty that can come from it. Mm-hmm. How was that phase to realize, like, most women, <clears throat> most girls at my age, they're talking about this, but I really, I can't cope with that. You know what I'm saying? And how did you cope with really telling people? You know what I'm saying? Um, so it was after college because I, I dated guys still in college. Um, maybe like my second, third year in the league, I realized I like women more than I liked men. Okay. And then as I, you know, continued to get comfortable with who I was, it became a point where it was like, I don't want a man. I just, I like women. Um, and just having my self-confidence um, and being myself, it just helped with that fact that mm. I'm not trying to hide who I am and who I want to be with. Who I love shouldn't be a question for anyone else. That's a fact. So I would say, like, after college, you know, I was still kind of unsure. You know, I was attracted to guys, mm. but I knew maybe, like, some years ago that, yeah, no, I don't want to be with men. Who f***ed it up? Nobody f***ed it up. It was just a preference thing for me. It wasn't something that somebody. Sometimes it could be like a dude that be like, he took you through the ringer. I and you know people say that's for other dudes. women though, and I don't think that's a case. You know, like I don't feel like an individual could just something up where a person is like, you know what, I'm not dating men anymore. Okay, let's rephrase it then. What female made you feel safe? Like where you're like, yo, is this? Hold up, wait. What? I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah, not yeah, even a female like, made me feel safe. It's just I started dating women and I just liked it more. Like, you know what? I'm cool off the guys. I don't, I don't want that. Nah. Okay. Now, personally, I don't know your family di- family's dynamic. Being from Wilmington, mm-hmm. that's a southern state. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. it's it's not like, you know what I'm saying? It's the Marry, mm-hmm. marriage young, start a family, you know, stay with your family, da 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 da. Like, boom, I'm from the South. So, how was you able to identify, or who was the person that you was able, like, yo, this is how I'm feeling? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Is that a family member? Because what I will say to this is a lot of people don't have no healthy outlets mm-hmm. to talk about real. Mm-hmm. And real is not like, you know, what you're going through every day is how I'm feeling right. every day. So did you have that person? I did. My uncle, my mm. mom's youngest brother, and also my mom. You okay. know, uh, even to this day, my mom is not, she doesn't condone my lifestyle, mm-hmm. but she's my mother and she tells me she's always going to be there and she's going to always love me. It's funny because a few days ago she was telling me, sometimes I wish you wasn't as honest with me as you are. So I do have parents who know the lifestyle that I live, and even though they don't condone it, they still accept who I am and love me as their child. Right. So that is my outlet. And my uncle is one, too, who's my mom's youngest brother, who's an outlet that I could talk to. And he's always like, you have to live your life for you, and you have to be confident and comfortable with who you are. Right. So, so. That, that, that premise alone is the main reason why I don't judge. Yeah. I think... So much hatred, so much racism, so much prejudice could be eliminated if we're able to just have these, some would say, uncomfortable conversations. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people result to judging because they don't know. It's like a black dude trying to understand, like, why the hell so many people like golf? Like, that lame if. But ask somebody who really plays golf. You know right. what I'm saying? Or like a white person asking a black, like, why the, why the hell does black people sag their pants? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Ask that sure. question. Right. And to be able to agree to disagree rather than just judging for what, what you necessarily know. Uh, I think it's very important that we as, as people, I am very big on um, self-analysis, like mental health mm-hmm. and especially going through a phase of personal identity. I have two teenagers, uh, 17 and 16, and I try to be the parent that's like, bro, come talk to me about everything. Mm -hmm. Like, because I try to protect my son from, you know, 
the vultures and the villains that just love him, but who your dad is? Mm-hmm. Oh, for real? Or my daughter, I protect my daughter from like me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just keep it a big buck. And yeah. I, when I, when I, I'm very intentional when I talk to, especially her, because I'm like, baby, you so pretty. And, mm-hmm. and I don't want nobody to just look at you and tell you anything that you can't come to me and, and have that conversation, you know, with. So whatever you identify with, right, have somebody to be able to go to, because as children, that's probably the only time or that's one of the few times in life that you can't really express yourself. Mm-hmm. So how was you able to express yourself in that time, especially going to the league, going through this whole time of, of whatever and, you know, whatnot? Um, I've always been close with my family, mm-hmm. even my siblings. Um, my sister was one who always questioned it. You know, she never really understood even as um, dating women and being a tomboy, she's like, well, why you don't want to wear girl clothes anymore? Or why you have to dress like this? And it's not like, I have to. This is what I'm comfortable in. Right. Um, so the dynamic that my family had, we've always had a close-knit where I had people that I can converse with and speak about how I feel. Um, so I didn't really have to look outside. Mm-hmm. A lot of times I feel like people don't have that outlet within their family. Um, a, a, a lot of uh, parents, you know, neglect or feel away with their kids for being who they are. Right. And fortunately for me, I had my family who I could always count on and depend on, even if they didn't agree with it. I said this off camera and I'm going to say it again. Chicks like you, <laughs> you give me a run for my money. Because, like, we go to the club, same club, you in one section, you in another section. Who we prey on, who we identify as cute and fine, it's the same type of chick. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, yo, how can I get an edge up on the tie? Because <laughs> she's smooth. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she ain't going to really, you know what I mean, be aggressive. I'm a blitzer. I'm going to show them I'm blitzing. Like, like, listen, baby, look, what's up? What it is? What it ain't? Why you ain't with me? You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> who better than me? Like, you may have a little smooth, little, yeah, yo, you want a drink? Oh, okay, what you drinking? Da, 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 da. What's your type? Hmm. Come on, Ray Sharma. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. I like classy women. Okay. Um, nice smile, educated, can hold a conversation. Hmm. Um, I like women that has, you know, morals and some substance, you know. You looking at their Instagram and they not naked and all their pictures on their Instagram. Watch out now. Yeah, that's what I like. That's what I like. You know, make you think. Mm. So, you slide in DMs? I have before. Give me some free game. (laughs) I need another free game. Like, if you you slide in the DM for the first time, right? Because you got to be very... Like meticulous. Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It's shot heaven over. Oh, of course. In my world now. But with you though, like, it's like when I slide, I'm not, I'm not sliding like trying to holler at you. But you are trying to. I am, but that's not what I'm okay, getting. Okay, okay, okay. Take me there, like help, help me out, like if you see somebody because it's hard for you. Yeah. Right. For me, I could just slide and, and be like, nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm not into men. Right? Yeah. I could find out easy. But for you, it's like, yo, I don't even know if she's into chicks. Absolutely. So that's a pressure in itself. And yeah. then you don't want to be disrespectful. Absolutely. I only slid a couple times. But you're a slider. Stop what? trying to save the face. A couple times. You slid you know, in the I did slide okay. and it worked. How, how do like what, like what's the what's the what's the method? You know, I look at the Instagram, mm. see what they're about. I like goal oriented women too, so I compliment something that they're doing. Okay, and so, then, so 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 right there, <laughs> right? And I'm gonna chop it up for you. You scrolling all the free game out. You scrolling? How far are you scrolling? We in 2023 right now. How long are you scrolling? Like, are we in 2016? On their page? Yeah. We in 2012. I'm looking at the whole page. A lot of times, they don't have that many pictures up. Boy. I mean, the ones I'm sliding in. 
Oh. I'm not about to look at a thousand, fifteen hundred pictures. Mm. That's just too many. So do we do we like and follow then DM no, or we're not we liking just, we're not following. We're not no. do, we're not commenting. Yeah, that's too that's too obvious. That's why we wrote you. <laughs> that's why we wrote you. <laughs> you just okay, now do you DM on finish mode? No. I DM in Vanish Mode. I do that do shit. That a lot. No, I don't DM in Vanish Mode. You just, you out there. Because like I said, when I DM, it's you're going to read my DM. You're going to be like, oh, that's sweet. Thank you. It's not like, oh, she's trying to holler at me. You're not going to know if I'm trying to holler at you. Yeah. Mm, you good. Like, see, that's why you're so dangerous. Because, like, we in, like, you're so intentional. But you're so fly, <laughs> player, you know what I'm saying? You got to be intentional. Okay, boom. You hit her with the da 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 Man, I like what you got going on. Boom, boom, boom. Like, when do you get the signs to, like, make your move? You see how they res what their response is. Okay. What's a, what's, a, what's a good response for you to be, for that person to be an advocate? Or what's a bad response that you'd be like, oh, no, nah, she ain't on it? A short response is a bad response. Like, a welcoming response that leads to another question or conversation. Mm. It shows interest. So, hey, man, I just like what you got going on, da 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 Appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Appreciate it, yeah. She cool. Yeah. We not writing her back no more. Uh, <laughs> it's dead. Are you unsending the message? <laughs> no, I ain't unsending. It is what it is. But that's why you and I are different. You unsending? I'm they honest. already seen it. They probably don't took a screenshot. It don't matter. It do not matter. I'm going to press the button, and it's going to say <laughs> unseen. <Yeah. laughs> Like, boom, I'm out of there. Boom. Now, I have unsent some stuff later. Okay. After the fact. Yeah. You know, like, I have a situation, boom, we kick it off, we don't talk no more. All right, let me unsend certain shit. Mm. So, I don't want that But if they go into details, in like, yo, man, appreciate it, man, I, you know, blah, 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 that's when you like, oh, we yeah. got something. Okay, I got a little chance. Mm. Okay, personal. Like, when you're in person with the situation, mm -hmm. like, how is that different? Or does that even change? I mean, my parents... You know what I'm saying? Like, women know I like women. So if you already linking up with me, then... You already yeah. know the deal. Especially if we not just friends already. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have a lot of female friends. Like, I have some, but I don't just have a plethora. I hang mostly guys. Mm. So even to that point, like, I be telling my chick, I'm like, babe, come on. Chicks know. Like, you know, but how do you know, babe? How do you know? Bruh. Because you know. You know. Yeah. Like, come know. on. Like, we're not going to sit up there and be like, boo boo the fool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's certain situations where it's like, okay, this is happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, Cam, like, what are you doing? It's like, bro, all right, whatever. Yeah. And as a female, I know females. And women know when they like somebody, just like women know when they're going to give somebody some. Like, a lot of guys be chasing women, and it's like, bro, like, she just not with it right now. Yeah. Like a woman, a woman knows if she gonna sleep with you on the first night or if she's not. Swear to beans. Now, have you ever consulted with a dude? Like, been like, bro, like ease up a little bit, bro. Absolutely, I got a lot of bros, so I give them, you know, the free game. Like, bro, like just chill a little bit. She, she making you work a lot or Like, nah, bro, you gotta apply, apply a little more pressure. Like, she like you, but she playing hard to get right now. But then, in this day and age, harassment is discretionary. Yeah. And I have to be very. Like, intentionally. We got to get to our game. But how do you know the total line? Because, man, you look good. That's sexual harassment for mm -hmm. one person. But, dang, you look good. It's like, it could be a flirt to another one. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you got to, like, read the room. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people have it, some people don't. You got it. <laughs> you got it. You got it, man. All right, man, look. So... I ain't get to none of my questions. <laughs> Golly, that's the ADD that kick man. And hey, we're about to play a game. It's called Funky Charades. All right. Now you must act out every single word, but you can't stand up and you can't speak on nothing. You feel me? So you have some things over there. Is there a certain time that we get, or is it just rock and roll? Say less. We're gonna rock and roll. All right. So let's see if our roach antennas can connect to each other and uh, see if, if we can make it do what it do. Ready? So I can't say nothing. Nothing. All right. Ready? Mm-hmm. A glizzy. Mm-mm. 
Sub sandwich. Close. Hot dog. It's a glizzy. Go. I don't know what a glizzy is. It's a hot dog. A glizzy is something else to me. All right. Lord um, Jesus <laughs> on the main line. <laughs> Tell hmm. me what you want. No sound. Mm. Rick Ross. Santa. There we go. Uh, guitar. Guitar player. <laughs> Michael Jackson moving Okay. There you go. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ski. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Makeup. Boom, we got it. Yeah! Our roach dog. That's easy. The roaches. <laughs> the roaches. That's the nah, I was like, what the hell did Michael Jackson have to do with a guitar? You know how he be. Dun, dun, dun. That's his dance, not really the guitar, but when he did the glove on and he be moving. Nah. We got it. You right. got it. Hey, it worked. So let me get into my questions, right? Uh, recently retired. How's this whole transition working out for you? At first, you know, it was difficult because I wasn't sure what was next. Mm. And it was when I stopped playing, it kind of happened abruptly because I thought I would be playing at, I wanted to do 15 years. Mm. I did 12. Um, but I've been grateful for, you know, other opportunities. So um, brand deals, marketing deals, entrepreneurship has been a blessing. And I've been able to control my life now with what I want to do, my daily schedules. Like, yeah. I wake up and do what I want. So so help me out, right? Because I'm going through a phase where I'm more out the league than in the league, mm -hmm. right? And to people that we've all seen, men or women, being away from the game that you, How long have you been playing basketball for? Like professionally or just... No, just in general. Since I was like nine. Right? Yeah, my so whole life. So now at your... Like only thing you know is basketball. Mm -hmm. So for multiple decades, just putting work into knowing, like, I have to get this ball into that hoop, mm -hmm. and that's just all I know. Now, as a, an adult, it's like, how do you cope? Like, mm -hmm. when you wake up, you don't have no structure. You don't have no uh, – and I'm not sure how the WNBA was, but for us, they give us our whole month schedule, mm -hmm. like team meeting, this, that, and the third practice, you know, right. we, Bye week is coming up, so this is one y'all will be able to travel or whatever. Like, how has that transition been for you, not really having somebody to say, like, yo, Ty, like, you late, <laughs> fine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, at first, it was difficult because I would wake up without an agenda. And like you said, we're so used to having an itinerary, having places that we have to be. Um, so it was difficult at first. You know, I went to depression for a little bit, mm -hmm. but... It's been like three years now since I've been retired and I've learned to cope with it. Now I set my schedule where I still go to the gym. Right. I still go work out. Sometimes I still go get shots up because it's, it's like routine. It's yeah. what you're used to. And I also like to stay in shape. But I just try to do different things, um, you know, to keep my mind at ease and at peace. Travel a lot and, you know, be around family and friends. I like it. With this new collective bargaining with the uh, WNBA, how have you been able to see the good... I don't know if it's bad, but are we, like, how do you feel about it? Um, it was, it sounded great, you know, at first because they're making more money, but it's really the top players that are making more money. So those players that was in the middle have been cut out, and now you have the top players, and then you have young players okay. because of that that pay difference, that pay gap. Um, they're paying the top players so much now that they can't afford to have the middle. Pay players. So now, you know, the game is a lot of teams that would have more veteran players. A lot of times now they don't. They have a lot of younger players because of that, that collective bargaining. Um, I think it's, it's great in the aspect that, you know, players are making more money, but I don't think they thought of that when they did the collective bargaining. So if you were the commissioner, right, if you could set a rule for the WNBA to abide by, like being in the game for so long, you've seen the ins and the outs. Mm -hmm. What would you implement? Um, I think the marketing. 
has to change. Mm-hmm. The marketing of the league has to be better. Um, marketing different players, I believe, for things that they're doing off the court okay. can help bring, you know, a different fan base in, which we need more fans to bring more money to pay more money. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that has been the gap with the WNBA, the, the marketing. It's only 144 players. Yeah. You can market these players. More than, than what you would do in, yeah. the, in the NBA. Absolutely. And our fans, supporters in the WNBA, they like to feel like they know you. They like to feel close. So I feel showing what women are doing off the court mm. will help that fan base. But wouldn't you say like that's a personal kind of thing, though? Uh, and the reason why I say that is... <clears throat> Like I have an all-star team and a lot of my kids are in high school. They're making a transition to the to college and then from college to the NFL. And my thing, especially with this whole transition of NIL, all mm-hmm. right, instead of going to a college for a specific NIL deal, my thinking in theory would be, bro, create your brand, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, that brands will see and say, yo, like, this person is a star. Like, look at the impressions. Absolutely. So instead of you going to the brands, the brands are coming to you mm-hmm. by promoting that. So to your point, like, with your personal, let's say, likings, mm-hmm. is that you to promote or you would, you're saying propel that with the help of the WWE? Um, yeah, exactly, both. Mm-hmm. You have to promote that for yourself. You have to build your brand yourself, but the league has to also accept that. Yeah. They can't want you to just be in this box as just a basketball player. Yeah. With the new collective bargaining, do you think more people or less people will go overseas to play? Um, no, because players still make so much more overseas. Some players do. Mm-hmm. and But they are implementing new rules where now players are going to have to choose between overseas or the WBA because they're making rules if you miss training camp. You know, it's fines and things of that nature. So so they are changing or they're not changing? They are changing. They're changing the rules for sure. So it's going to be, you could play overseas and? Well, now players are doing both. Okay. But the WNBA is making changes to where players cannot just be overseas missing WNBA games. Mm-hmm. So, man, I think women as a whole are superheroes because... I have children, Mm -hmm. and I had children in season, Mm -hmm. right? Take me through, like, you've been around the game enough to, like, do you have to sit out a whole year? Or what's that process? Like, if I want to start a family, if I'm a woman, Mm -hmm. right, and I want to have children, like, these are the, this is the prime of your life. Mm Like, most people come into the WNBA 21, 22. 21, yep, 22. Right? Yeah. You probably will retire around 37, 38. If that. You know, the average year for a WNBA player is three and a half years. Mm. So, if you have a long mm-hmm. career, when do you have time to grow a family? Yeah, it's tough. How would how would a person do that? Like, for, for the people that you know, and you they can remain nameless, but I'm curious to know that. Um, it's tough, and it... If it's something that you're planning, it's almost like you have to plan to be pregnant towards the end of your season so you can have your baby and still have time to get back in shape and come back and play next season. Is there any clauses of, of like, uh, paternal leave in contract? Um, I don't think so. What? I'm not sure. So I don't want to be quoted on that. So, like, basically what I'm asking is if I'm a woman athlete, Mm -hmm. especially in the WNBA, is there a clause where I could still get paid? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They they can't not pay you because you're pregnant. Yeah. Right. Paternal leave. But what if that time frame is the whole season? Then that's that's what it is, you know, because as women, you can't tell a woman, oh, you can't go have a baby, you know, like that's... But it's... It's tough. It's it's things happening now that, you know, one of the teams are being investigated for. Yeah. So with this whole thing, I think what we've seen in recent news, the the Brittany Griner situation, mm-hmm. right? Um, I'm going to ask, if she was LeBron James, would LeBron would have gotten different treatment? Would he have been back sooner? I can't say that. I, 
I can't say. For one, LeBron is not going to play overseas. That's a fact. You know? So you can't say. It, it's a tough situation. Um, I feel like they were fighting for BG to come home. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't say, you know, like, if it was LeBron, you know, what would happen. Because we didn't even, you know, know that this would happen to BG. Mm -hmm. So... Because she's a big deal. Yeah, she absolutely. She's always been a big yeah. deal. You know what I'm saying? She's it was been just a big off. deal here. She's been a big deal in Russia. Like, yeah. she's been playing in Russia her whole career. Mm. So you would think, like, Russia wouldn't treat BG like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's been playing for your country for, what, eight years or so. Like, so you wouldn't think that would happen to her. Right. So it's just, it's an unfortunate situation. And I can't, you know, compare and say if it was LeBron, he would have been home sooner because... Just don't know. I mean, it's tough, but from the the uneducated person, mm -hmm. that's not, I wouldn't say uneducated, but I'm just not, I see what ESPN shows me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know she was over there for a long time. Nine months. You know, and <clears throat> there is a lot of like scratching the head, like, yo, what the hell? Like, mm -hmm. why? Like, why are we still having this discussion? Right. You know, and it was almost like she was held up as collateral almost. To, Absolutely. It was bigger than her. Yeah. It was almost like an episode of a, a prison break. Yeah. You know, it's like you think it's one thing, but it's really a bigger thing. And then it's more people got their hands in the pot. And, you know, so seeing that whole transition kind of lay out, you know, how do you warrant or, you know, really put yourself in a position where it's like, yo, we got to be better as a whole in like, that's what I know. Mm -hmm. Like, if the WNBA could do something, not I wouldn't say them personally, but as a as a group for inclusion, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 the woman athlete, right, how can we be better in this country? The, the support and the togetherness. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing is resolved until we all do it together. Yeah. And you see that in so many different aspects, you know, even with what happened with Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. It's like you have some that's willing to do it and then some that's like, no, nah, like I'm not losing my job or I'm not jeopardizing. But if everyone collectively do it, then what happens? But we're never in that mindset. We're never in that space where we're all on the same page collectively. And that's why I feel like we get the short end of the stick a lot of times. But why is that, though? Because you you have some that's willing and you have some that's afraid. Because I, I, I put it like this. And let's take Kaepernick as a situation. And it's almost similar to um, the COVID shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? It's like, you can stand for what you want to believe in. Yeah. But if it's you do, yes. Mm -hmm. It's like, you don't got to get the vaccine shot. Mm -hmm. But if you don't. So then that's, that's my point. So now what if everyone is like, I'm not getting the vaccine shot? Then what, you're not going to have a league? That's a fact. You see? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, so if everyone on the team or all the teams in the league saying, we're not getting the shot then what the league gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna tell you like this. It sounds admirable. It sounds so easy to do. Right. But you're not thinking about, let's take a Lamar Jackson mm -hmm. who just signed, congratulations to him. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about him. He can easily say, all right, y'all don't wanna do this? Cool, I'm straight. Mm -hmm. But what about the person at the bottom that's like, yo, bro, I need this money. Right. Right. So that's the leverage that a league or anybody will be able to have and say, like, just because you don't want to do it, we're going to find somebody that's going to take this money right. and do it. Right. So that's where the the kink in the armor mm -hmm. kind of happens, because a lot of players try to unify to back certain movements and stances. Mm -hmm. It's like the lockout. Right. Yeah. It's like you have this this belief in something but it takes one person who's desperate mm -hmm. to say, bro, I don't have time to be waiting three months. Like, bro, right. I got I got alimony. Yeah. I got uh, child support. I got just living conditions. Like, it's tough. Right. So that's why people don't unify because different people have different 
situation. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But that's why I'm, you know, it's it's hard to have a whole collective because you got so many different people with different needs and different wants. So it's hard for everyone to collectively be on the same page. Yeah. All the time. So you was a big opponent of the Black Lives Matter movement, right? Yeah. Going and seeing the whole transition of, you know, what the movement stood for, are you, are you happy in the space that it's in now? Just awareness to the Black Lives Matter. Um, I believe we brought more awareness, you know, um, but it's not a state where it's like you're happy because we still have a lot of growing to do. Um, but even when I was in the league, still, it was matters and causes that we wanted to stand for. And, you know, we have team meetings for mm -hmm. everyone to, to be on the same page and see how people felt. Um, so I feel like it's still a progress. You know, we still have more work to do, but I see it moving up. Yeah. So even to another matter, right? Like just the whole overall awareness of LGBTQ. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. That community, right? Being an advocate for equality mm -hmm. as a whole, especially in sports, because, you know, there's a lot of things, especially with the NCAA, that they just uh, passed a bill that you could be able to pay, play with what you identify with. Mm -hmm. um, like, what's your stance on th that as a whole? Like, if I identify as a woman, then I can go play WNBA, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do we stand on that? How, like, where are we with that? Um, I feel like there are advantages. Um, you know, like, men are naturally stronger than women. Yes. So... If a man who's transforming um, as, as wants to identify as female and plays in a female league, you're naturally going to have an advantage. Hormones. And I don't think that is fair. Mm. Did you see, I think it was something, uh, was it swimming? Um, where a transgender won. Mm -hmm. Right. I didn't see that. Um, was it was it swimming? Right, and she beat a a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like okay. The issue is all right. Like I, I believe in identify whatever the hell you want to identify with. Mm -hmm. But competition, mm -hmm. we all have to be fair, mm -hmm. right? Now, if that were to be the case, I would say let's have a transgender league. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like that'll fix everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To keep everything equal, it's almost like we all believe in like, and I'm a big advocate in youth sports, amateur sports, mm -hmm. right? It's like my son's playing football seven and under. If I find out that a kid is nine. Like, bro, come on. Yeah, he has an advantage. Yeah, that's an yeah. advantage. He doesn't seem more life. He has more experience. Correct. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. So as a man, it's like, yo, if if it's like Javante, mm -hmm. if he's fighting a heavyweight, like, bro, it's an advantage. Like, mm -hmm. he's 135. I've seen that like 135, 142. Man, I weigh 142 in the seventh grade. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, how are you fighting uh, Deontay Wilder? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, what are we talking about? Right. So now in sports, it's like the same thing. It's mm -hmm. like, yo, you have an advantage mm -hmm. with that. So we have to create something. And, and if you identify as that, like, that's... Create that's, something that will make it more equal. Like, Caitlyn Jenner. Mm -hmm. He was raw. <laughs> Competing with dudes. Right? Yeah. So you take that and now you put... Her or Caitlyn in a, in a situation where she's competing with women, like that's not it's not fair. Yeah. Right. So just for the whole stance of the movement, like how can we be better with just the overall representation of, you know, the LGBTQ community? Because I like we've seen it, we've seen it happen all the time. Where um, we've seen it happen in football with Michael Sam. It's like. 
us not knowing, and this is the pressure because when nobody knew, it was all good. SEC player of the year, co-player of the year or whatever, had an amazing career. And then all of a sudden when you identify, it's just like, bro, I should have just mm -hmm. kept quiet. It makes people uncomfortable with being themselves. Right. So in that state of America, mm -hmm. what do you say to that person who is battling? Like, bro, I feel a certain type of way. This, this is me, mm -hmm. but I can't really show me, mm -hmm. you know? It, it happens all the time, you know, with people not being able to be comfortable with who they are mm -hmm. um, for so many different reasons, religious reasons, uh, job security, you know, um, acceptance. Um, I always teach, you know, even younger kids, you know, be yourself, believe in yourself. Um, that's just my stance, you know, uh, but everyone doesn't have that self-confidence. So it's tough. But what would you say? Like how? Like help, help me help I don't the know audience. What I would say. You know uh, what I'm saying? Because there's there's more females mm -hmm. and males that feel like you. Yeah. Right. And you are a a, a glimpse of hope for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving you that because that's that's facts. Everybody's not gonna grow up to want to be this. Mm -hmm. Some people are gonna say like, no, I don't I don't want to go right. I want to go left. Mm -hmm. Like left identifies with who the person that I am. And you always change, you always evolve. The 24 year old Cam is not the same as the 33 to 34 year old Cam. You know what I'm saying? Like, I believe God created seasons for change, yeah. you know? So the world doesn't stay the same. So why should we? But as we're going through that, like, we need to be able to create a safe space for individuals to be themselves and not judge them. Because if a person were to say, yo, I like men, or a female were to say, I like females, is that really going to affect if I get a job or not? It shouldn't. But it does. It does. Absolutely. You know, so you're able, like, I don't believe like that's right. I think there's a lot of healing that we have to do as a, as a country. Mm -hmm. As we close things here, though, like, take me through the, like, what, what Tabby doing on a regularity? Like, what would somebody know? What, what, what would somebody not know about you that you like? A lot of people don't know that I'm shy. What? Yeah. For real? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, people think I'm an extrovert, but I'm really an introvert. And, you know, people look at my Instagram, they see me smiling, they see me hanging out with people, and they think, you know, like, oh, Ty likes to be the life of the party, she likes to do this, but I'm really chill, laid back, and I'm really, like, shy. I really like to stay in the cut state of myself unless, you know, I have to be out. You could? I do. I don't like to, but I could. What's your go-to? Like, if you was hosting the Obamas, it was coming to your spot. Like, what you going to cook? Uh, some salmon, rice, and vegetables. Yellow rice? Wild rice? White rice? White rice. You're going to have some glaze? You know, white rice is really tough for a lot of people to make. Because a lot of, of people use that bowl in the bag or the rice pot. I know how to actually make rice. Well, talk to me. It'll like, help me out. <laughs> I may want to cook some rice tonight. You want to cook some rice tonight? Probably not. Probably, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I don't have to know how to cook rice and let a person know if this rice is cooked right or not. True. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but we ain't gonna cook no rice tonight. We ain't cooking no rice tonight. So, as we end either. things here, Funky Friday, Fim, Ty, appreciate you. But we're gonna end it, we're gonna do it in unison. We're gonna start with this camera, and then we're gonna go to this camera right here. And then we're gonna finish at that camera right there. You ready? What Got we doing? One finger, one pinky, one thumb, one love. Get it! Yeah!